Today is February 15th, 2023. I want to talk about the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. I'm going to start as usual looking at liveuamap.com. It is a pro-Ukrainian live map. Keep that in mind when we look at it. But nonetheless, we see uh, fighting uh, kind of spreading all along the line of contact in the Donbas region and this area in particular, Bakhmut. We see the encirclement uh, enveloping more and more of the city, and we see these red rifle icons inside the city. This is a pro-Ukrainian uh, live map admitting that Russian forces have moved into the city. And I want to show you this from The Guardian. Uh, this was February 14th, 2023. Ukrainians blow up bridge in Bakhmut amid reports Russia closing in. And it says Ukrainian forces have reportedly blown up a bridge near the eastern city of Bakhmut and a sign that they may be planning to retreat from the area, which would give Russia a significant symbolic boost ahead of the first anniversary of the war. No, it would actually be the elimination of a heavily fortified uh, city that Ukraine controls, forcing Ukraine to retreat to less defendable positions. It would be a, a major strategic victory for Russia. And just to give you an idea of how much progress Russia has made since just uh, the, the new year, 2023, this is from January 1st to February 15th. This is how much progress Russia has made. Just to give you an idea of how uh, precarious the situation is for Ukraine right now at this moment, this is what has happened. And this is a process that Ukraine is unable to stop, let alone reverse as well. And if we go back to liveuamap.com, Russian forces pushing westward from Kremena. And this is the furthest extent that Ukrainian forces uh, reached during their Kharkov offensive last fall. Now I'm going to get into a series of articles here from the Western media talking about how the West is more or less acknowledging that they are unable to maintain this level of support for Ukraine. They're running out of weapons, they're running out of ammunition to transfer over to Ukraine. These are things that I've been talking about for months and months now. The West is finally acknowledging what was a problem they were aware of all along. I just wanna point out uh, before I get into that, when Ukraine launched their Kharkov and Kherson offensives, I, I warned people that this was not the beginning of some great Ukrainian victory against Russian forces. It was the beginning of the end of Ukraine's fighting capacity, that they were throwing in all of their reserves, all of their trained manpower, all of these heavy weapons that they themselves still had left or that NATO had transferred to them. Uh, since the special military operation began, and they were throwing all of this into these two offensives to try to push them as far as they possibly could. And I compared it to the Ardennes offensive during World War II toward the end. Germany committed what it had left of its reserves to the Ardennes offensive. They made these initial gains. Everyone thought that maybe the tide of the, the fighting would turn. Uh, but then they, they reached the furthest extent they could push. They were unable to sustain this offensive. It, first it stopped, and then it was rolled back. And then that's what Germany would do for the remainder of the war, getting pushed back until its ultimate defeat. And I, I told people that that is exactly what was going to happen. And I remember distinctively comments saying, wow, that prediction really aged poorly, Brian, because look, look at how successful this was for Ukraine. And again, the, the Ardennes offensive initially was very successful. Uh, but then, because it was unsustainable, it was rolled back. And that is what we're watching right now unfold on this pro-Ukrainian live map. We're watching their gains made during the Kharkov offensive be rolled back by Russian forces. Now, let's take a look at some of these articles from the Western media. This is from Reuters, NATO allies weigh more arms for Ukraine as Russian artillery batters Bakhmut. Much of Russia's artillery fire was focused on Bakhmut, a bombed out city in Donetsk province and a principal target for President Vladimir Putin. Ukrainian troops 
there have fortified positions in anticipation of street fighting, which according to the, the pro-Ukrainian life map has already begun. There's not a single square meter in Bakhmut that is safe or that is not in range of enemy fire or drones, uh, the regional Ukrainian governor told uh, Ukraine's national broadcaster. So I guess now, now Ukraine is admitting that this, this battle for Bakhmut involves a huge amount of artillery, especially on Russia's side. So all of these claims that we've heard about human waves of untrained convicts uh, among the ranks of Wagner, I, I guess that wasn't true because now they're admitting that, that that's not true. They're not just doing human waves. There's also a huge amount of artillery. And that is the, the main problem that Ukraine faces. They are outgunned in Bakhmut. And I've showed older Financial Times articles where they admit they're outnumbered up to six to one in Bakhmut. And so to counter the lopsided nature of this fighting, because these claims of human waves attacks, that is just propaganda. This is what Reuters in their article says. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said he expected Ukraine to launch its own offensive against Russia in the spring. And Kiev's allies are working to ensure that they had the armor, firepower, and logistics to make it effective. It also says Ukraine has urgent requirements to help it meet this crucial moment in the course of the war. We believe there will be a window of opportunity for them to exercise initiative, Austin told a meeting of defense ministers of NATO and other allies of Ukraine to discuss options for more military aid. I'm going to get into what more military aid the West has left to give Ukraine in just a moment. The Kremlin is still betting it can wait us out, but one year on, we are as united as ever. That shared resolve will help sustain Ukraine's momentum in the crucial weeks ahead. Ukraine is currently using shells faster than the West can make them. So you can be as united as ever as you want, but if you physically cannot send Ukraine the amount of weapons and ammunition that they need to achieve certain objectives on the battlefield, then it doesn't really matter. And you can see people like the U.S. Secretary of Defense deferring to these empty platitudes instead of talking about actual realities on the battlefield because none of those realities suit or help advance U.S. objectives in this proxy war against Russia. The article also says promised battle tanks last month. Ukraine is also desperate for fighter jets and longer range missiles soon to nip any significant new Russian offensive in the bud and help turn the tide against Moscow's far superior firepower. Even the tanks are not going to get there in, in enough time for Ukraine to be able to effectively use them on the battlefield. And even if they have NATO operators operating them, the problem is that these tanks aren't meant to just be operated on the battlefield themselves. They're meant to be used in combined arms combat, which also involves warplanes, air power, which Ukraine does not have. And in order for the air power, the tanks, the infantry, all of that to show up at the same time, uh, NATO would actually have to fight this war for Ukraine. There's no way for Ukrainians themselves to incorporate these Western weapon systems that they have not used before in any amount of time that will allow them to do this at the same time as uh, Russia's supposed spring offensive or sooner uh, to either defend against it or to follow up on the, the spring offensive. There's not nearly enough time. This takes years to do. And I've talked about in previous updates, actually my last update, about how the West is even admitting that it takes years and years to get a country to trans, uh, transition from Soviet era warplanes to something like the F-16. Romania is undertaking this process. They've been doing it for a decade now, and it's still not complete. So that just to put this in context, there's no chance at all for Ukraine to do this. The only way they would be able to do it is if NATO just intervened themselves uh, on, on land, in the air, and in all regards, because Ukraine is not capable of doing it themselves. 
Here is an article from Politico. I've actually, I got two articles from Politico. This is the first one. US tells Ukraine it won't send long range missiles because it has few to spare. And I've actually seen people celebrating on social media, pro-Ukrainian pro Western propagandists celebrating. They're saying, well, at least we've moved past the, the idea that the U.S. doesn't want to sell, uh, send them to Ukraine because it'll escalate the conflict. But this is actually a much bigger problem. I mean, they, even if they send them to Ukraine, they simply don't have enough. For, for it to be effective. They don't have enough to spare. If they don't have enough to spare, it's certainly not enough for Ukraine to use against Russia. The article says, in recent meetings at the Pentagon, US officials told Kiev's rep representatives that it doesn't have any army tactical missile systems to spare, according to four people with knowledge of the talks. Transferring attackums to the battlefield in Eastern Europe would dwindle America's stockpiles and harm the US military's readiness for a future fight, the people said. That worry, along with the administration's existing concern that Ukraine would use the 190 mile range or 300 kilometer range missiles to attack deep inside Russian territory and cross what the Kremlin has said is a red line, is why the US isn't shipping attackums to the front lines anytime soon. So if you actually read the article, they're saying that in addition to not wanting to escalate further, they also simply don't have enough to send Ukraine. Uh, the attackums, again, with a 300 kilometer range, that, that, would, that would give Ukraine further reach. But the problem is these attackums exist in smaller numbers than the guided rockets that Ukraine is using with HIMARS and the M270 launcher. Uh, they exist in smaller numbers and they are produced at a lower production rate. And we already know that the guided rockets Ukraine is currently using already face a shortage. Uh, the attackums will face a shortage much, much sooner. And because they exist in smaller numbers to begin with, they will not be able to be used as, as widespread as Ukraine has been using these guided rockets. I also want to point out that the attackums, even if it was given to Ukraine, uh, this is not a capability that Russia doesn't already have. They have the Iskander missile system has a 400 to 500 kilometer range, so it actually outranges the attackums if the U.S. sent them to Ukraine. I want to make another point that I pointed out many times before. Ukraine itself admits that Russia has adapted to uh, Ukraine's use of HIMARS and these 70 kilometer range guided rockets. And if Russia is able to adapt to that, they most certainly are going to be able to adapt to the attackums, which exist in fewer numbers and will be used a lot less often than HIMARS, the, the shorter range guided rockets that the US has already been sending Ukraine. Uh, so it's important to keep all of these points in mind. We have this from the Telegraph. U.S. warns Ukraine it may not be able to continue same level of support. Washington says it cannot supply long-range attack missiles as it would harm its own readiness for war. So two things. They're reiterating the fact that they can't send the attackums because they don't have enough. And the attackums is a missile system that the U.S. would be interested in using in uh, a, a war of aggression it wants to provoke with China over Taiwan. Uh, it, it would be much more useful than the guided rockets the U.S. has been sending to Ukraine. This Telegraph article says, for now, U.S. President Joe Biden has told Vladimir Zelensky, his Ukrainian counterpart, that he can count on Washington's support for as long as it takes. But that could soon change if Ukraine fails to demonstrate that the flow of Western weapons can change the course of the war. They, they cannot. Uh, and so this, this means they're going to stop supporting Ukraine. We will continue to try to impress upon them that we can't do anything and everything forever, a senior U.S. administration official told the Washington Post. Uh, so this is the Telegraph citing the Washington Post. As long as it takes pertains to the amount of conflict, the official added. It doesn't pertain to the amount of assistance because they are running into the limits of what they can send to Ukraine. And all this type of comment does is place additional political pressure on Ukraine to make decisions on the battlefield related to that political pressure rather than make decisions based on tactical and strategic realities. It's going to uh, encourage them to carry out 
offensives, very similar to the Kharkov and Kherson offensives, where they they score some political points, they take territory, but at, at, at a huge loss. Brigades and brigades worth of men and equipment gone. And it's going to leave them at the same point where they are now, where they're waiting for an entire army's worth of equipment to be sent to them. It also says, instead of big ticket items like tanks or fighter jets, Mr. Reznikov, this is the Ukrainian defense minister for the time being, is expected to press on the need for his Western allies, the need for artillery ammunition. Ukraine's armed forces are burning through artillery shells at a rate of some 6,000 a day, faster than the West can resupply them. Russia is firing some 20,000 rounds a day, roughly the same amount uh, produced by European factories uh, in a month. Uh, there's also this this article, also from Politico, the second Politico article. U.S. focuses on training Ukrainian troops to use less ammo. Western nations are growing concerned over their ability to quickly replenish stock. So I, I think you can see a trend evolving here where the West is admitting that they, they cannot continue uh, resupplying Ukraine. There are limits to their ability to sustain this proxy war. And difficult decisions are going to be made. Ukraine is, is suffering specifically because they are outgunned. They're being outfought by Russia. Uh, and now they're saying, use even less ammunition than you're using right now. And so this is not a strategy to win. This is a strategy to get Ukraine to fight for as long as possible, to, to stretch this conflict out for as long as possible, which will get more Ukrainians killed. Yes, also more Russians killed. It will more thoroughly destroy Ukraine, but it is not going to change the outcome of this conflict, which will be Russia achieving whatever objectives it set out to achieve. The article says the U.S. is prioritizing helping the Ukrainians tweak the way they fight, relying less on artillery barrages and more on how the troops maneuver on the battlefield as concerns mount over Western nations' ability to replenish ammunition stocks. So this is, this is them admitting we cannot give them more ammunition. We can't even sustain the levels that we're supplying to Ukraine to where Ukraine is losing at this rate. We're going to be supplying even less in the near future. So what we want them to do instead is train on how to use artillery less and depend more on maneuver warfare. Well, maneuver warfare is what Ukraine was doing during their, their offensives in Kharkov and Kherson, which led to them losing brigades and brigades worth of men and equipment. When you're doing maneuver warfare, you're operating out from behind your defenses. So you're more vulnerable to the, the heavy amount of firepower that Russia has at its disposal. This, this has been Ukraine's problem the entire time. So this isn't a solution to the problem. This is the U.S. admitting they, they cannot go with plan A, uh, out, outproduce and outgun Russia in this proxy war. So this is plan B. Uh, try to make make do with even less than you're already using at the moment and still losing the conflict. It says France and Australia have agreed to work together to produce more 155 millimeter munitions, which are the backbone of Ukraine's newly acquired Western artillery arsenal. And this arsenal can be counted in uh, several hundred artillery pieces transferred from the West to Ukraine versus the over a thousand artillery pieces Ukraine started with when Russia launched its special military operation late February last year. Uh, so it says the U.S. has also scrambled over the past year to increase its own output of 155 millimeter shells. As Ukraine continues to fire thousands of rounds a day, burning through the 1 million plus 155 millimeter munitions the U.S. and its allies have sent, the U.S. Army has pledged to triple its monthly output of shells from the pre-war total of about 14,000 a month to up to 90,000 a month by 2025. So a couple of years from now, they will be making shells, 90,000 shells a month. But if Ukraine is firing 6,000 shells a day, that's only half of what they need. So in several years time, after they've expanded their production, they're still only going to be producing half of what Ukraine needs just to lose at, the, at their current rate. That's what they're talking about here. 
this is not a strategy for Ukraine to win. This is just a, a strategy to drag this out for as long as possible. And, and it will be primarily at the expense of Ukraine, the, the people of Ukraine, uh, the country, the infrastructure of Ukraine. The article also says, as the U.S. and Europe look for ways to increase their output of shells to keep their own warehouses stocked and supply Ukraine for its warm weather offensives, they are looking at the current training efforts in England and Germany to change how Ukraine moves on the battlefield. Part of that means figuring out ways to fend off Russia without expending too much ammo. This is this is an absurdity. It says, we are working with the Ukrainian soldiers in various places throughout Europe to emphasize additional training on maneuver, Austin said, so that they are, uh, so that as they place more emphasis on maneuver and shaping the battlefield with fires and then maneuvering, there's a good chance that they'll require less artillery munitions. The UK, which has already trained 10,000 Ukrainian soldiers, which is about as many as Ukraine loses in a single month, according to Kiev themselves, uh, the UK has pledged to train another 20,000 this year. So over the entire year, 20,000, Ukraine is losing 10,000 a month. That, that's what they're talking about. Uh, so, so this is NATO, the United States and NATO admitting plan A failed. We, we cannot fight this proxy war against Russia on the same level that Russia is fighting it. We simply don't have the industrial output to manufacture enough weapons and ammunition to m even match Russia's firepower, let alone exceed it. So now we're going to try to train Ukrainian troops to maneuver on the battlefields uh, in a way that they can somehow defeat this withering firepower that, that Russia has at its disposal and you somehow use less ammunition in the process. It's, it is a fantasy. It is a fantasy that is going to get thousands and thousands of Ukrainians killed and drag this conflict out longer. But it is an admission that the, the West simply cannot match Russia. And this this is them on their way to admitting that this is a failed project. This proxy war against Russia has failed. That is what they're on their way to admitting here. And I want to point out that Russia has the ability to rush forward uh, into Ukrainian defenses. They have tanks, they have infantry fighting vehicles, they have armored personnel carriers, they have military aviation. They could carry out combined arms, uh, maneuver warfare in and around Ukrainian defenses. But they know that if they do that, they will, no matter how successful you are, you will always suffer more losses doing that than the incremental approach that they are using right now, taking advantage of their ability to use heavy amounts of firepower at long ranges. Ukraine does not even have that advantage, and when they do maneuver warfare, they lose even more troops and equipment than if they just uh, stay on the defensive. This is a reality that has uh, been demonstrated over and over again all throughout this conflict. Now we have this from the Washington Post, Ukraine live briefing, NATO meeting focus, NATO meetings focus on weapons production. U.S. general says Russia lost. So I, I guess he said Russia lost. So it must it must be true. It says General Mark Milley, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, said that Russia has lost strategically, operationally and tactically after he met in Brussels uh, with defense chiefs from countries supporting Kiev. And if you're General Milley and you're saying things that are obviously not true, that means that there's nothing true that you can say that, that suits your agenda. That's what this is. Uh, I don't think you can look at what's going on in Bakhmut and say, yeah, it looks like Russia is losing strategically, operationally, and tactically. As a matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. They are winning on all, on all three levels. And if you go to the whole transcript, which is here, and I'll include it in the the links in the video description below. Uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Army General Mark Milley uh, hold a press conference following the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, Brussels, Belgium, February 14th, 2023. If you read through this whole thing, he goes over the whole, the whole array of lies that they repeatedly cite that Russia's suffering tremendous losses, referencing the 100 or even 200,000 they claim Russia has lost. And I've, I've pointed out how 
they've never tried to break down this number or give it any sort of basis in reality and how uh, when you do see western organizations try to break down russian losses the number they come up with is much closer to the russian ministry of defense's own numbers that they have publicly stated uh, general milley also says this war is extremely dynamic and Ukraine today is fighting while training and involving future operations. Ukraine will integrate recent commitments of armored vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles, and tanks with fires to achieve the effect of synchronized ground maneuver, which I've already explained takes years to do. Ukraine doesn't have years, so that is patently false. And then he says, while Russia has waged this war for far too long, they will not outlast Ukrainian people nor the group of allies and partners that met today. And this just reminds me of the U.S. saying how they're never going to leave Afghanistan uh, until Afghanistan is, is ready to stand on its own, the client regime they installed into power, and how virtually overnight everything collapsed. And, and that was the rhetoric they were using right before it collapsed because they wanted to convince people that it wasn't going to happen. And then it did. Same thing happened during the Vietnam War, the U.S. occupation of southern Vietnam, and how that all unraveled and collapsed. And this is the same type of rhetoric we're now hearing about the U.S. proxy war in Ukraine. So they're telling us about how General Milley thinks Russia has completely lost, but then getting back to the Washington Post article, this is what they go on and they say. It says, senior U.S. officials say time is growing short for Ukraine's backers to dispatch vast quantities of new equipment, which its forces are awaiting to launch a spring counteroffensive. And I, I am telling you that there is literally not enough time at all for Ukraine to learn how to use this equipment and then use it effectively in a spring offensive. It is, it is impossible. Uh, it will only happen if NATO is operating these vehicles. That is the only way it's going to happen. It also says, there was a palpable sense of urgency as top military and defense officials gathered here for the latest meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. This is what the Washington Post's own reporters uh, were saying. So it, do it doesn't really sound like Russia is losing uh, operationally, tactically, strategically. It sounds like Ukraine is losing. It also sounds like it's not... Russia that's been fighting for too long and won't be able to outlast Ukraine sounds exactly the opposite. And that is listening to General Milley and his rhetoric versus what even the Western media is admitting to at this point. Now, I think that about does it for this update. We got to keep an eye on this. We cannot underestimate the US or NATO, but just looking at what the Western media itself is admitting at this point, it looks very grim for Ukraine. So again, we'll keep an eye on all of this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. I'm on Twitter, Telegram. Uh, all of my videos are backed up from YouTube onto Odyssey and Rumble. In the video description, there will be all of the links that I've referenced in this video as well as for ways you can help support my work i don't monetize my youtube channel if an ad ever pops up feel free to either block or skip the ads they're not helping me at all if you do want to support my work please do so through buy me a coffee and also through patreon and to everyone who has been helping out whether it's one-time donations uh, month to month or even if you're just sharing sharing my work with others sending me news tips, putting kind comments in the comment section. I appreciate all of that. That's what makes all of this possible. So again, thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.